welcome all of you uh, to the hospitality live session. In this session, we're going to be speaking about key hospitality payment trends to accelerate your growth in 2022. Uh, if you can move forward, Kimberly, please. You, okay, so uh, before getting started, a few comments on how we're going to organize the session. The duration of the session is going to be one hour, so we will end at 11 sharp. There's going to be an open Q&A section at the end of the presentation, but you can raise your questions uh, whenever you want using the Q&A tab in Zoom. You can either raise them to both to Warline or to Bohemia Switzerland Spark, who's going to be also participating in the session. And uh, if there are any questions left, you can also use the email travelhospitality at warline.com to send us any questions around our services and solutions. The session is gonna be recorded and we will be sharing the link to the session so that you can uh, view it or share it uh, with your peers. And also the link to download uh, a white paper that we have recently launched on hospitality payment trends. We are pleased to welcome today to our speakers. Uh, good morning, Inga Alman, uh, e-commerce manager for Bohemia Suites and Spa. Thanks for participating in this session. Good morning. Great pleasure for me to be here. <clears throat> and we, all host, we also have from the Worldline side, uh, Kimberly Hoovers, key account manager for hospitality. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning. And the agenda for today. So uh, we will go straight to the point and we will start talking about payment trends to accelerate your growth strategy for 2022. Afterwards, we will deep dive on Lara's customer journey where we will see how these payment trends are key to provide a seamless and high quality customer journey. And next, we will leave the floor to Inga so that she can explain Bohemia Suits and Spa payment journey. And finally, as I said before, we're going to have an open Q&A in case you have any doubts that you want to raise both to Inga or Kimberly. So I leave the floor to Kimberly. So thank you for the introduction, Sabrina, and welcome to all attendees of today's webinar. A lot has happened for all of us over the past two years, but we finally seem to be heading in the right direction. Countries reopen, restrictions and measurements are being lifted, and hoteliers finally notice an increase in the occupancy rate of the hotel. Although it's hard to not look back on the pandemic and its impact on our private and business lives, I am here with you today to focus on the good, the positive and the uprise of the hospitality industry in 2022. Let's kick this webinar off with two overarching trends for the hospitality industry in general. The first one is demand evolution. The demand landscape has changed. People are no longer making decisions based on only price, location, and amenities. Other critical points now are the cancellation policy and the hygiene and health measurements of a hospitality venue where they want to, um, where they want to stay. Um, so, um, a personal service was already very important pre-pandemic. But now post-pandemic offering a frictionless uh, check-in and check-out with multiple ways to pay is just as important. But what can you really do to adapt to this trend? First of all, you can get creative with offerings to your guests. Offer more to them than just a hotel room. Think about um, offering them an extended stay to a hotel room. Um, offer them a hostel, hotel room for a few months or offer them a hotel room uh, for a workation so that they can use the hotel room as an office. Um, but you can also think about special packages to be delivered to your guests. So really more than just selling them a hotel room for a few nights. And then another thing you can think of is flexible changes and cancellations. So you must really offer your guests the possibility on a full credit or full refund to their hotel booking. And if they want to do a cancellation that you don't uh, come up with any penalties. And then at last, um, think about adapting your loyalty programs. So how you can really do this is offering your guests uh, discounts on loyalty points, um, because this really encourages the purchases and it creates, of course, more uh, cash for the hotel. 
And then the other trend for this year is digitalization and innovation. So guests, they really spend more time online and they really expect hospitality venues to offer them contactless technologies and digital solutions. And to really distance yourself from the others, you must be there for your guests online exactly where they expect you to be. So two thirds of the consumers, they really used less cash during the pandemic and they moved towards a uh, contactless solution. And 80% of the US travelers have said to be willing to use a mobile app to check in um, at a hospitality venue. Because apps, for instance, they can do a lot from uh, the check-in and check-out to buying um, room service or other foods and drinks to even booking a hotel room or a spa treatment during your stay. Um, and the, um, the, they also have help, I'm sorry, they also help to manage uh, hygiene concerns and they really allow hospitality venues to maintain service levels at a time uh, when they are dealing with staff shortage. So this really reduces the workload on staff and it really allows hospitality venues to do more with less. And here with you can really deliver a better guest experience uh, to your guest while the efficiency improves and the costs are reduced. And a few examples you can really think of um, to answer to the strength are uh, a contactless check-in and check-out. So offer your guests uh, to pay with smartphone apps or cloud-based solution, or what about introducing a chatbot? Because here with, they can bypass the front desk and um, it also allows a keyless check-in. And what you can also consider is voice commands, um, introduce Amazon's Alexa or Google Home to your hotel guests so that they can, for instance, control the thermostats in their uh, hotel room or other systems in the hotel. And at last, um, rise of robot technology, because a robot can do almost everything. So from um, cleaning a hotel room to delivering amenities uh, to the hotel room of your guests, and what we really saw since the pandemic began is that the amount of purchases for robots, they really have doubled. But when we look um, at payments in particular, um, there are eight key payment trends to focus on uh, for this year. Let's have a quick look at them. So first we have frictionless payments. So the payment landscape has really changed and e-commerce is now part of the integrated omnichannel journey. Frictionless payments, they must really be integrated to offer guests a simplified, personalized and seamless experience with multiple uh, touch points that really offer guests to pay in a way uh, that works best for them. So you can think about a seamless check in and check out, but also a full integration of all the channels which are used by a hotel into the property management system. Uh, but other things uh, to think of are also the possibility to pay uh, with a mobile device, um, uh, digital wallet payments like Apple Pay and Google Pay and other contactless options. Um, and then another thing for this year is really the engagement of your guests through loyalty and gamification. Um, so the recovery of the market is really a good opportunity to rebuild the relationships you have with guests and gamification can really add value to that. So gamification is actually when you use a technique uh, which is normally used in a gaming environment and then you use it in a non-gaming environment to get another way of engagement with your guests but also another way of interacting with them. And the gamification can really be used to identify loyalty, but also to gather data and customer feedback. And data suggests a rise of 47% um, for brands or in the engagement for brands that really incorporate uh, gamification into their uh, daily operations. Um, and then what is also very important to be aware of for this year is alternative payment methods. So 
payment systems, they should really allow guests to pay with a payment method um, that works best for them or that really fits into their, their wishes and needs. And what you can consider of is, for instance, to activate WeChat Pay or Alipay for the Asian market, but also possibility to use a QR codes to perform a payment or uh, perform a payment with a payment wallet, as already mentioned, but also a biometric payment uh, when you, for instance, scan, uh, scan your fingerprint on a device on where, or when you show your uh, face on the screen. And at last, we have also the in-app payments. And to give you an example for that, let's say that you are uh, playing a game and you have uh, coins, but you're coins are almost all gone, then you can perform a payment in the app itself or in the game uh, to get more coins. And then another one for this year, which is in my opinion, really the core of everything is a full integration uh, from all the channels which are used at the hospitality venue into the property management system. So here I really talk about your uh, channel manager, your booking engine, but also the connections you have to your um, online travel agencies. And then the most important thing is that, of course, your property management system sits at the heart of everything you do. Um, in your hotel or other uh, type of hospitality venue and then. What is really uh, adding value to this is um, introducing a tokenization solution, which of course also answers to the PSD2 legislation, where your guests uh, one time offer their, uh, their card, for instance, online on your website, their card details are safely stored, um, and then they can be used later on by the hotel uh, to perform a top up. And when you really incorporate this into your processes, you can save time uh, on the processes, of course, and the time you save can then be used uh, on what's the most important for every hospitality venue, which is, of course, offering the guests the best possible service. And then another thing for this year is a value added services to deliver an enriched guest experience. So, um, Employees in the hotels, they must really get close to their guests again, and they can only do this by investing in the infrastructure uh, to deliver a better um, experience. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, I'm a little bit. Ah, yes, I'm sorry. So in our opinion, they really have um, a once in a generation a chance to really reboost their hospitality business and to come better uh, back better than before the pandemic. So what you can really think of here is, for instance, introducing an all-in-one or uh, Android-based terminal for the bar or the restaurant where your guests can order their foods and drinks themselves. And then at the end of their dinner, they can use the split the bill functionality uh, to split, uh, of course, the bill, which is for group uh, is very handy because there are normally a lot of discussions um, uh, who needs to pay for what uh, part of the bill. Um, and then another thing for this year is artificial intelligence. So payments uh, systems, they should really help hospitality venues to better understand their guests and the guest preferences. And this really needs to be done by using artificial intelligence to analyze guest data. Um, are guests, for instance, using any ancillary services or um, did they use your self-service check-in or check-out kiosk during their stay? Did they use a mobile app? Uh, something like uh, like that. So payment systems, they can really um, deliver these insights, which are, of course, highly val valuable to hospitality venues. And payment systems, they should also allow the hospitality venues to um, identify any gaps in the data. And then something which really adds to all the other trends we already discussed shortly is the 360 degree integration of e-commerce. So e-commerce has been the market standard for a long period of time already, but guests, they now really expect it to be seamlessly integrated into their guest journey. So really from researching uh, for a, a hotel room, 
to uh, buying or paying for any uh, amenities uh, during um, their stay. And also mobile apps and kiosks must now really be considered as part of the 360 degree integration of e-commerce. And then last but not least, so um, omnichannel, omnichannel solutions, they really give hospitality guests the freedom to choose for a channel that works best for them to pay. So think about paying online or in person or using a fingerprint or swiping your card to perform a payment. And uh, tokenization is now really emerging as a key method to change the guest journey and the guest experience. And as already shortly um, discussed or uh, explained is that adoption of tokens really means that your guest only needs to offer his card once to a payment terminal or to an online payment page. And then his card details will be tokenized, safely stored to use later on. And then the guest doesn't have to perform any additional payments anymore because that's something that the hospitality venue can do itself based on the tokenized guest uh, or card de details. details. And then, um, but how do you really translate these trends into uh, the daily operations at your hotel? Well, at Worldline, payments are at the heart of everything we do. But in the fast-changing hospitality world, payments are at the heart of the guest journey too. Um, so even, of course, during their stay, but also when they, uh, before they arrive in the hotel and in most of the times also after their departure. So. Let me introduce you to Lara, who is on her journey to a hotel in Barcelona, a journey supported by Worldline's payment solutions. Lara will tell you exactly how all, how all these trends come together on the hotel floor and how you can increase your revenue, save time, work more efficient and uplift the satisfaction rate of your employees and guests. So, Laura is a woman from London. She's 30, year, 30 years old and she is a single marketeer that travels a lot for work. She has a tight agenda and she really appreciates to perform bookings in an online environment. Must it be via an app or a website? And um, this is really for her to avoid queuing at the hotel reception. And she really likes to be approached by email and social media with promotional outings from the hotels where she stays. So a few weeks before, Laura decided that she needed to go back to Barcelona, the city which she loves already for as long as she can remember. With a smile on her face, she opens her laptop and starts to make a reservation on the website of your hotel. There are actually three options when it comes to paying for a booked stay. She can decide to make a reservation online and pay for it directly um, via our supported payment page, which will be connected to the booking engine uh, on the website of your hotel. Um, for instance, uh, behind the booking engine of Cubalist from Stardeck, TravelClick from Amadeus, uh, but also Syncsys from Sabre. Make her already feel at home by offering her the possibility to pay with the payment method she already knows from her daily life. You may think of ideal when she's a Dutchy, bank contact for the Belgian market, or so forth for the German market. And at last, you can also consider to activate e-dynamic currency conversion, which offers Laura the possibility to pay in her home currency on your website instead of with euros. Um, but Laura can also decide to make a last minute reservation by phone for which she can pay upfront via a payment link, which she can receive via WhatsApp, email or SMS. Already two easy payment methods to pay upfront for which you can create a payment page in the look and feel of your hotel, but also a wide range of payment methods which can be offered, such as the most frequently used ones, but also Alipay and WeChat Pay, Apple Pay and Google Pay, but also PayPal, who are gaining more popularity worldwide every day. At last, she can also decide to pay on the day of arrival in the hotel. 
Here she will pay via our integrated hospitality solution that connects your property management system to our payment terminals. When Laura inserts her credit card on the payment terminal, her card details will be tokenized and safely stored to use later on by the hotel, for instance, to perform a top up. Her card only needs to be offered once to the terminal. It's an easy, secure and fast way of checking your guests in and offering them service during their stay. You make your guests feel at home. We provide secure payments wherever home is. So after a full morning uh, booked with meetings, it's time to relax. Yes, it's spa day for Laura. With the mobile app of your hotel, um, Laura can book herself a preferred treatment. She can book herself a, a, time a fitting time slot into her, of course, a very busy agenda. And then she can pay for her book treatment directly. As again, our payment base will be connected uh, to the app of your hotel. So that's really an easy way to book a spa treatment. Um, but there's another way Laura can perform her payment. During the reservation uh, she was doing on your website, she also created the guest profile. And what she can do when she books amenities or food or something like that, she can use her guest profile or book the order or treatment on her hotel room and then perform the payout uh, during the moment of checkout from the hotel. So standing at the forefront of a new payment terminal era, more hotels are starting to look uh, for an um, all-in-one solution when it comes uh, to paying. So it's really a solution that combines the best, the best of both worlds. It's a cash desk register and a terminal on one single device, something with which we can fully support you as a hotelier. So a complex, a complex environment in your f and uh, or a complex setup in your f and environment is history, uh, thanks to our newest development an omni-commerce Android-based uh, terminal that brings the guest experience to a whole new level. So Laura just woke up and it's time for her to get some breakfast in the restaurant of the hotel. The hotel opened a self-order restaurant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The waiters are really there to have a conversation with her. They're there to help her if she has questions about the self-order device. They are really there to give her another restaurant experience than the one she's used to from the past. Even more personal, more service oriented and more guest friendly. So Laura decided to book herself a trip by bus through the beautiful city of Barcelona for today. And this is her only free day during a week full of customer meetings. So to prepare herself for being outside all day, she decides to buy a lunch box in the supermarket of the hotel. So the hotel has a self-order supermarket and Laura, she can easily select or yeah, select the, the goods and food she wants, put them in her basket, um, insert them on the kiosk screen of one of our partners and also pay for her goods, foods direct, uh, goods and foods directly as the payment terminal or our payment terminal will be connected to the software of one of our kiosk partners. And what you see is that in this supermarket, there's a host or hostess and the host is really there to uh, maybe help her out with the kiosk device but mainly there to give her a little smile or a small conversation to really give her some positive vibes for the day. Um, so after a long day being outside, discovering the beautiful surroundings of Barcelona, Laura is having a lazy evening and decides to stay in her hotel room and order room service. Also for this, she can use the app of your hotel. So, in the hotel room, there's a QR code uh, visible in the form or shape uh, of a sticker. And she can easily um, scan this uh, QR code with her mobile device. And then she will be redirected to the order page or the app. And then she can easily um, select a pizza with all her favorite toppings, a drink, a piece of chocolate pie. And she can even select at what time she wants her order to be delivered to the hotel room. 
And again, she can pay directly uh, via our payment page, which is uh, connected, of course, to the mobile app. Um, the mobile app can also be used to uh, book a day trip or to buy a bathrobe or a nice bottle of wine. Um, as already said a few slides back, is that Laura in her guest journey created the guest profile. So here again, she can decide to book the order on her guest profile and pay for it during checkout. So um, Laura's last day. Um, in the hotel is there. So Laura's uh, stay in the hotel comes to an end. And after a good night of sleep, she's in a hurry to catch her train to the airport. So in the hotel lobby, she decides to use the fast self-service checkout corner. And here again, your property management system is connected to one of our payment terminals. So Laura can uh, select her hotel room, maybe use her fingerprint or show her face to a camera. And then if there are any outstanding amounts to be paid, she can pay for them directly. So after receiving the receipt, Laura can leave the hotel for her journey back to London. So um, this is really where the journey ends for Laura, but for the hotel, the journey is not over yet. During multiple touch points in Laura's guest journey, the hotel really collected interesting data. Did Laura use the self-service check-in or check-out corner? Did she use the mobile app? Were there um, any other uh, services she used during her stay? And with this information, the hotel can really do personalized marketing. Uh, for instance, um, offering her a discount on a specific amenity she used during her stay, or think about loyalty points uh, or loyalty cards. So what we just did, we gave you an overview of the most important trends for 2022. Then we did a dive in payment trends for 2022, and then we translated it into the guest journey of uh, Laura to show you how the trends really merge into the different touch points in the guest, in the guest journey. And to make it even more touchable, um, I'm proudly to present to you my highly valued relationship, Inga Alman from Bohemia Sweets and Spa. Um, we're here today for a short Q&A with Inga because the hotel started last year with our integrated hospitality solution, which really offers an omnichannel solution uh, for the hotel. So it's combining the payments in the physical environment of the hotel, but also everything that happens online. And we're here today, of course, to hear from Inga what her findings are with the newly implemented solution and what it really brought to the hotel. But before we start with the Q&A, I would like to give the floor to Inga so that she can shortly introduce herself and give you a little background of Bohemia Suites and Spa. So Inga, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Uh, yes, yeah, said it's a pleasure for me to to attend today this this webinar, and yeah, my, uh, I'm here at the hotel, the responsible for e-commerce and reservations, basically. But on top, well, around this, a lot of other maybe um, new projects, like for example, it was our payment gateway and the secure payment system that, or uh, yeah, we could. Um, finish successfully together with Kimberly and our main well about the hotel I can say we are a boutique hotel we do not belong to any um, chain we are associated to design hotels but uh, basically standing on our own and even though it was possible to to fully get uh, the whole service and to find all the solutions we needed. So maybe the main um, point may always be that you don't have, if you're not a big chain, you don't have the power to find the correct systems or not that way. But it was definitely possible. And maybe Kimberly, shall I just start a little bit about why we consider to switch Yes. Uh, to an integrated solution, for example, yeah, for yes. us, the basic point was to uh, offer security, well, to invest in security for our customers, as all payments, uh, according to the new PSD2 regulation in the uh, European Union, 
uh, they were getting really on focus and it was really um, yeah, difficult to handle payments in a secure way. And for example, what Kimberly mentioned, two guarantee bookings that we could be sure to have a possible cancellation fee later on to, um, and all, well, we, we were looking for one single solution for several integrations. So this must, it had be compatible with our booking engine, which, which is Zebra, with our PMS, which is provided by Infor. And uh, in addition to that, we were looking for easy um, payment options for our customers to make phone, WhatsApp or mail uh, payments secure and fast. And as we are, I mean, our property is very, um, yeah, focused on selling also a lot of extra services. We are a leisure product. And this means that our customers are here to, to enjoy their free time. So we can be really creative in creating around all that uh, new packages to offer day pass, to offer extras in the rooms. And all this is now really, it ha has become much easier now that we can use all these, uh, yeah, the omnichannel options we, we got from Worldline. Um, yep. basically yeah <laughs> yeah thank you Inga so I think it's really interesting that you start about the special packages which you're offering because that's yeah. of course what we discussed a few slides back which is a trend also for this year where it's really in interesting and important for hospitality venues to get creative with offerings um, are you able to explain what other key elements were there for you in a decision to go for the solution which you implemented last year yeah, of course. I mean, besides the, 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 it was important for us to have one provider for all uh, channels because um, I don't know if other hoteliers have experienced it. You get like um, tons of offers from the channel manager, from single extranets to contract their payment gateway to make some um, processes easier. But to be honest, once you have an omni-channel, you can control all those progress, everything. I, you, can, you can, in the same way, for example, a no-show from booking.com can be charged with your own control in the same way booking.com wants to sell it to you. So this was, I mean, we were, we were very sure that we wanted to keep the fees, um, that there are additional fees, of course, for secure transactions, but mm -hmm. as low as possible, mm -hmm. as closest to our what our bank was anyway or was anyway charging us for any credit card transaction uh, alternative payments were not there of course but well we, we were looking at this and of course then it was a great uh, added value to have uh, more payment options available and to mm -hmm. know that you might have the possibility to add them also in the future in our case, for example, we did not uh, contract the, the payments through PayPal, but maybe also because our property is not the one who is where the clients are requesting this. But for mm -hmm. example, we, we do have Amex payments and it's fully possible with all the same options a Visa or a MasterCard payment could offer you as Amex, for example, but I think this is related to the customers we have uh -uh. Uh, is really required. Yeah. And then, I mean, I was very, very happy with the, with the support uh, we got from Worldline during the setups. We had to do several setups, of course, because it was integrated in the booking engine, the integration in our PMS, and then setting up our virtual payment environment. So, um, yeah, this was everything all in all a great package i have to say <laughs> well that, that's good to hear uh thank you for that and can you because i'm really curious to learn um what difference uh are now what differences you notice or the employee notice the employees notice um since the new solution has been implemented what did it bring to you to your employees in the front office 
in the front office it, it saves it saves a couple of minutes for each check in and check out and it's like you you transmit you're able to transmit more a more professional service let's say because the client does not have it it before it was maybe he was showing the card for a guarantee we had to type it manually into the pms uh -huh. then doing the authorization and and the same for a payment and the same for an extra and the same on checkout. So it was all every time related, of course, with a lot of uh, physical uh, contact as well. Uh -huh. And this step now goes all in one. So it's one pre-authorization or you can take uh, the payment in advance. It's also a bit according to the type of booking and the wishes of the customer. And yeah, but it, it gives us a range of, of better service and to, of course, this is what converts lately in having more time to maybe explain the destination, to explain our hotel services, yep. to, to spend some more minutes with each client that is not only related with paperwork or okay. payment operations. <laughs> yeah, it's, and well, this, of course, every manual process um, is also leading, may lead to just me typing mistakes, just uh -huh. those easy things that maybe a payment is not processed because you typed the number wrong. Yep. And with tokenization, we really noticed that this, this part of errors that are happening, I think, in every reception of the world, or at least what I have experienced, so it's, it can always happen. And this is just uh, yeah, eradicated completely. The okay. same as typing amounts of to pay. It's uh -huh. everything. Yeah, like in one in one step, you get everything. So that's really time saving. Yeah. Okay, that's really that's really good to hear. And I think it's also very interesting to to learn that you can really have another dialogue now with your guests. That you have more time to really focus on them instead of being busy with the payment process or typing in the card. Um, so that's that's very very good to hear. Do you also notice that it really brings added value to the guests? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, we can because, as I said, we could get really creative with offerings, and the, for example, surprises in the room are very common over here. And uh -uh. it is if if it is for an anniversary or the parents are staying, for example, at the hotel and it's one of their birthdays and they will ch their children want to uh, prepare something. It's easy to arrange in the same day because you know you will get the payment in this moment and there would be no uh, problem for us to get flowers, to arrange a birthday cake or whatever. So it, it really, yeah, I mean, we really got, we really widen our, the offer. Uh -uh. Of, of extra services yeah because we had the possibility to yeah to get the especially the prepayment it's, it's especially services where an extra cost is involved because we need to order for example flowers uh -huh. to the flower shop we don't have them on site so it's it is an extra cost and if you're not sure that the guest will pay for it it's just a little example but with this you can of course expand the options so yeah, we, we really, and of course, in other terms, the service for the guest, as I said, less, less time showing their card. Uh -uh. I mean, they, um, yeah, they really enjoy it, the checkout. Yes, the card that was authorized is going to be charged and there is no need to, to show it again. So these are all steps and like, yeah, the feeling of, of service has been improved of, of a better service. Hmm. Okay, that, that's good to hear. Um, I see that we have a few questions coming in in the chat as well, but okay. maybe before we answer them, I'm really mm -hmm. curious to learn like what uh, what was the impact on your employees for really um, putting the process in place? So really the switch to this integration, um, di did you have a lot of changes to be made? Was it adapted quickly? Can you give a little bit of background on that? I, to be honest, we really, it was a quick adaptation. After the setup was done, it was easy to, to handle the, the environment. Mm, let's start with the, all, all three environments we have, all three products uh, are, I mean, user-friendly. 
the accounting um, our accounting manager is, is happy with the with the detailed report which was before a bit a bit different from our bank let's say uh-uh. and the yeah once you have set up all the templates and uh, the connection is good with the pms it is really really user friendly so uh-huh. the there was no the impact on the staff is that it is it was accepted very good this change because it it was an operational change of course uh-huh. but we got used to it very quickly it's really um user friendly yeah <laughs> Okay, and maybe if we summarize, can you name the three key benefits uh, for really implementing an omnichannel solution in the hotel? Yeah, well, for us, as I said, the first one was security, and it was important to comply with with the PCD2 regulation, Uh which, of course, results in higher customer confidence and customer satisfaction at the same time, because payment is always a... As you mentioned, in hospitality is always a critical point. Yeah, and yeah, the it it saves a lot of time. Um, it is this uh, um, saves time for customers and saves time for us because the the processes are just got. I mean, several steps in one. Like I tried to explain, it's really time saving. Uh-huh. And of course, then the flexibility that is available um, from your side from Worldline to really adapt to to what we needed and uh-huh. to adjust the yeah the necessary options there can be payments it can be the way of reporting or all those details uh-uh. uh, yeah the flexibility was was also I mean the final it yeah had a lot of influence on our final decision okay <clears throat> And then I was just thinking about something you just said. You really said that it also adds value when it comes to the booking.com um, transactions or the reservations. Can you yeah. maybe explain what it really did to the hotel? Because you are dealing, of course, with booking.com and maybe also other OTAs. So mm-hmm. you really implemented a workaround that that within this workaround you no longer need or you don't have to start working with a booking platform from a uh, payment platform from booking.com no correct yeah we we i mean we did in all in the setup during the setup and afterwards and a bit before as well of course there are necessary operational changes and maybe some conditions need to be revised and need to be renewed mm-hmm. But it is fully possible, for example, for booking.com, yeah, we, we just set up a stricter policy and we try to um, like us to, to get a prepayment of for each booking, but not at the time of booking. So not a non-refundable one, uh-huh. but then like five, seven or 10 days before the arrival of the guest. And at that moment, it is a margin enough for us, at least in our case, to maybe if this card is not valid, we are able to to really notify it as an uh-uh. invalid uh, invalid card. And if um, if a booking then needs to be cancelled, we still have the chance to sell it again, to sell that uh-huh. room again. It's not the same as waiting if this is going to be a no show. Uh-uh. I kept the room; it was a no show, and on top of it, I'm not even able to charge any fee because the card um, was was fraudulent or was a, a has been deactivated in between. So yeah, we adapted our process, and with the help of the for example the virtual uh, mail or the telephone order terminal, in a way that we can completely, in a secure way. Uh-uh. charge those bookings and at the same time be sure that those uh, guests are going to arrive and <clears throat> yeah it all it all, everything got like very transparent uh-huh. after we, we renewed our even our own booking conditions we all had the feeling that it is all processes are more transparent now there's more transparency in 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 such uh, uh-huh. yeah critical process it's 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 nice great it's nice it's yeah it's really yeah. i mean it feels good let's okay. say <laughs> that's the most important thing okay <laughs> great 
So mm -hmm. thank you so far, Inga. I think it's time to yeah. focus on the questions which came in. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if Richard is also there. You're on mute, Sabrina. Okay, yeah, uh, Richard is here. I'm gonna, he's already unmuted, so. Richard? Yep, I can hear you, sorry. Great, so um, there, are, there are some questions for Warland and some questions for Bohemia. Maybe we can start, I mean, there's a specific question for Bohemia, but uh, it's like some personal information. I don't know if you are open to share this or no, Inga, it's up to you because you're asking like which PMS provider are you working with? So this is something like really specific. I oh, mean, but no problem, we are working with okay. INFOR. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I think it's good to add a little bit of information as well. Um, if Richard can step in to explain uh, how far we are with Opera when it comes to the integration for the on-premise and also the just to give a little info about the uh, versions because, uh, to answer to Philippe's question. Ah, hey, Richard. Hello. Hi. Sorry. So what was the question? Which PMSs we have at the moment was it? Or? No, the question um, was by Bohemia. Do you use Opera PMS? If yes, could you precise the version? Thanks. Okay, so we do. Um, at the moment, we're certified with Opera PMS. Um, I can't remember the exact version number, but it's five point six definitely or above um, for on premise. And Opera Cloud, we will have very soon, um, hopefully days, if not a couple of weeks, we'll have Opera Cloud certified as well. Thanks. And obviously if it's Opera Cloud, it doesn't matter because it's hosted. So it's their latest version always. Great, thank you. Um, can you see the other questions or do you want me to read them? No, I don't see them. Okay, so we have a question from Carlos. He's asking, as part of the omnichannel experience, are you keeping PCI DSS with road lines so the customer can upgrade its services? If yes, how are you bringing PCI DSS in all the digital channels uh, previous mentioned, app, website, others? Um, I think that's probably more of a question for our PCI specialist <laughs> than me. I'm, I deal generally with the hospitality suite, so um, more on the technical side than, but I mean, as always, I mean, we're a payment gateway. We have all of our solutions have to be PSCI DSS and PA DSS certified all the time. Um, otherwise we wouldn't even be here talking to you. So, uh, but yeah, ev everything I know is kept up to date with the latest versions. And we obviously do all of the checks and scans and all of that, but um, I don't know the exact details. We'd have to talk to the security people for that. Yeah, so maybe, Carlos, uh, to add to Richard, if you want to, you can send me an email after the webinar. I'm more than happy to uh, dive on into this um, after the webinar to just uh, give you uh, a little bit more, more details. Then, yeah. Yes, yes. So we will certainly do that for you. And then there's another question from Carlos. Um, usually the hospitality business fraud is recurrent. How are you keeping track on it? Do you have any any input fraud reduction? And what will be Worldline? On the fraud reduction side. Sorry, say that again, Kimberly. They wanted okay. to know what the... Okay, so usually the hospitality business fraud is recurrent. How are you keeping track on it? Do you have in any input? Um, again, it's probably not my specialist speciality, so I'll have to pass on that one, but we can, um, we'll take that offline and we'll uh, get back to them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I add to Richard as well, Carlos, I think it's good if we, um, also, um, reach out to our fraud department, if they can yeah. maybe give a little bit of background, how we're dealing with fraud and if they have any advice for you to, uh, how to reduce it. So, yes, please feel free to send is me the, an email. I mean, just going back, is there, is there any particular uh, fraud case that he has, which occurs regularly, that you can tell us about? Or maybe we'll wait for Carlos if he wants to say that. Um, yeah, I mean... Pose the question differently. If there's any other questions in the meantime? I have another question for, for Inga. Uh, related uh, to uh, payment experience uh, and guests. So they are asking us, uh, how do you merge the way customers want to pay with the reality of hotel operations? How do I 
they want to pay. Yeah, so I mean, how do you merge like um, the the payment uh, needs of your customers with the, the hotel operations, you know, the back office, no? How do you merge these two concepts? With the, I mean, if I don't, I've, if I'm not understanding wrongly this, this question, I mean, this is something to define, I think, in, in the conditions. Is it, if it is related to reservations, for example? I mean, how, I don't know what should the, be, the meaning here of merge be uh, with, with back office, because we, we are, for example, in our case, we, we have um, several yeah, payment, payment models, for example. So the advantage of, for our direct bookings is in many cases that the payment is done at the hotel, but the card got uh, tokenized in the virtual environment. So we do have the card, but the customer will pay upon arrival. And then of course we have other, like for example, the big part of booking.com uh, where we charge the customer in advance. And at the hotel, he only guarantees extras through a pre-authorization at the front desk, but he's not performing a payment upon check-in, just a pre-authorization. And then he is paying at the checkout either with another payment method, but this depends on the customer or with the card he gave us for, for the pre-authorization. So basically, if this is the question, I'm not sure to merge with back office. I, I mean, we are all here. We have to work hand in hand. I think the, what is reservation department and the front desk. So front desk is in charge of face-to-face -face operations. And in the back office, we are uh, yeah, dealing with especially prepayments and possible pre-authorizations, pre-stay. So this is how we are separating here at our hotel the, the operation. But I don't know if this answers the question. <laughs> Good. Um, I think, uh, well, we just have like a few minutes left. So I will leave Kimberly the floor like to wrap up the session. And then please, uh, before disconnecting, I'm gonna send you a quick poll to get like some feedback on, on, on the session. So please just like spend like two minutes uh, before you disconnect answering a couple of questions so that we get some feedback. Yeah, so from our from my side, I want to thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Also to all speakers, thank you for being here today. Um, I think that the recording and the presentation will be shared with you after the webinar. Um, there are also my contact details in it. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about what has been presented or if you're interested to learn more about one of the solutions we discussed with you. Um, and then, yeah, for now, I thank you again and I wish you a lovely day today and um, enjoy the sun. And I hope to see you next year or I don't know, the next time. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you, Kimberly. Thanks, Kimberly. Bye. Thank you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.